What's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on former two-time world title challenger Anthony Yard of the United Kingdom following his second round TKO or knockout victory over a guy that I can't even remember his name uh, on the September 23rd ESPN Plus card that was headlined by Zhali Zhang and Joe Joyce in their rematch. Um, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, Anthony Yard, one of my favorite fighters. Uh, I'll give you that one, especially one of one of my favorite UK fighters. Love this guy's style. Um, you know, this guy is just a pure, uh, you know, he can box, um, but he's got, packs that big punch. Um, he was bouncing back off of his the third career defeat at the hands of Arthur Better Biev, um by a TKO in the eighth round as he challenged for the unified title. But you know he had um, he gave Better Biev all he could handle and was actually winning the card when he got stopped or winning the fight when he got stopped. Um, you know, and I was uh, similar to his first performance way back in I believe it was 2019 when he fought Sergey Kovalev for the for the WBO title and came up short. Um, but was was had hurt Kovalev and was really in the fight. He just ran out of gas. Same thing happened. He ran out of gas. Um, you know, but Anthony Yard is still hungry um, and is still a very good fighter and a threat at light heavyweight, in my opinion, for, for sure. Um, so now the big question is, what's next for Anthony Yard? Well, um, it, I know there's a lot of talks about the winner of Joshua Buatzi and Dan Aziz as they are colliding, I think later this month, actually, um, for the, uh, in a WBA eliminator. But we'll see, we'll see, because uh, they, they said they got a handshake agreement, but I think they're forgetting about the world champion sitting in the WBA, and we'll talk about that. So let's run through the top 10 and see what we got here, uh, the possibilities for Anthony Yard and what he could be doing next. We start with, the number one undefeated unified champion, Arthur Better Bia, which would be a rematch. Now, I would love to see a rematch, and I think the fans would, but Better Bia has, um, one, he won by a TKO, and it was a convincing victory. So it wasn't, even though he was losing the fight, he wasn't getting blown out. It was it was somewhat close, and he got, uh, he got the knockout victory. So, you know, you could argue there's no need for a rematch, even though we'd like to see one. Um, but also, Better be if has mandatories, dude. He's got to fight Callum Smith, and unless in, a, in January, and unless the undisputed title fight gets made between him and Bival finally, he's going to have to fight Michael Eifert, his IBF mandatory. So, um, I don't see, I, I just, it's not going to happen next for Yard to get a rematch with Better be if. Um, Demetri Bival, the undefeated WBA champion, Canelo Conqueror. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, I think could happen but it looks like Buatzi and Aziz is for the WBA's final spot uh at and a shot at the title so I don't think um Bival is going to be available unless um you know Buatzi decides to fight Yard so I really think that Yard is going to have to fight he's going to fight the winner of of Buatzi and Aziz or they're going to fight Bival. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I, it's just, it's hard to call it because you would think he's a viable option, but I really think he's going to have to mandate a shot against either that, or he's going to have to wait around for Bival until after, um, Bival makes a mandatory. So we'll see. I, I just don't think it's going to happen next. You got Callum Smith, which is an all UK battle. Now this one is intriguing. If Callum Smith were to upset Arthur Better Biev, um, it, it would depend on if he holds on to the IBF title because if Callum Smith upsets Arthur Better Biev, he's likely going to have to make his IBF mandatory defense against Michael Eifert next. Now, that's not to say the fight with Yard couldn't be set up down the road, but I just don't see Yard and Callum Smith happening next. Also, because Callum Smith doesn't fight until January against Better Biev, and Yard, you know, it, it's already four months after a second round TKO, and then he's gonna have to wait how many more months to get the shot at at um, Smith? I, I just, I don't know, unless he fights on the card, 
But then again, I, I think Cal Smith is going to be mandated to fight Michael Eifert, the IBF mandatory challenger. So I'm not seeing um, Smith and Yard being uh, an option, even though it's been talked about before and it's an easy fight to make. Then we got uh, Gilberto Ramirez. Well, Ramirez looks like Cruiser, he's done with light heavyweight. He's, he's fighting actually this Saturday against, um, against Joe Smith Jr. And that fight's taking place uh, in the cruiserweight division. It's actually at a catch weight of 193 pounds, which they pretty much are moving up to cruiserweight for this fight. And Ramirez has pretty much said that he can't make light heavyweight anymore. So, um, so I, I don't see Gilberto Ramirez and um, Anthony Yard being a possibility, to be honest. Um, then you got Joe Smith Jr. Um, Joe Smith did say uh, that. If it was a big fight, he would come down to one, back down to 175. Um, I think a, a, a fight with Anthony Yard would be a straight up slugfest, but Joe Smith is fighting at cruiserweight against Gilberto Ramirez next. Um, I don't believe he's going to win that fight. If he if he loses that fight, especially if he loses convincingly by a knockout, is he really going to want to come back down and take on Anthony Yard? I just don't see that happening and being the case. Now, if he beats Gilberto Ramirez. It's up to him because he might want to say, well, hey, I want to conquer a second division. But what would be intriguing about coming back down to 175, the fights are bigger at 175. So it's one of those ones that you just don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to lean towards the less likely because I don't think Joe Smith's going to beat Gilberto Ramirez at cruiserweight. And I don't think he's going to want to come back down to light heavyweight and fight um, Anthony Yard coming off of a loss. Then there's Michael Eifert, the IBS mandatory challenger. I, because he's the mandatory challenger, I don't, I don't think he risks it by fighting Anthony Yard. I don't see that happening. Um, he's in line. He defeated John Pascal to earn his shot, and now he's he's basically waiting for the winner of Better Be and Callum Smith. I, I, you know, I mean, I don't think the IBF is gonna make him wait another fight in between unless it's for undisputed. So that might be the case. If, if the WBC finally allows the undisputed title fight to happen between Bival and Better Beev, then I think it's possible that Anthony Yard could fight somebody else. But if that happens, I think Yard will probably fight the winner of Buatzi and Aziz unless they don't want to risk their mandatory shot at the title against Bival. So it's just really a tricky situation and up in the air. Michael Eifert's a possibility, but um, I'm leaning towards the less likely for Yard. Then Joshua Buatzi. Now, again, I believe Buatzi and Anthony Yard could be for like an interim title, but I think the only way that fight happens is Buatzi has to beat Dan Aziz this month in their fi WBA final eliminator. And then the, WB, the WBC is gonna have to allow um, Dimitri Bival to fight for the undisputed crown against Better Beef. But remember, the WBC came down strong and said they are not going to allow any title fights with Russian fighters, with Russian born fighters like Bival as a stance against the war in the Ukraine. I hope they change their opinion because it's not like Bival is for the war in the, in the Ukraine, you know, between Russia and Ukraine. And I don't think it should be impacting Bival. I think they should allow Bival to fight for Undisputed against Better Beev and just let it go. Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know. But as of right now, I'm leaning towards the less likely that we see um, that happen. So what that means is Bival probably is going to fight the winner of Buatzi and Aziz next. And Anthony Yard and Buatzi are not going to be possible. But if that doesn't happen, I think Buatzi and Anthony Yard, because they've verbally agreed on fighting each other, I think it definitely could happen if undisputed takes place so we'll see then you got jean pascal the former world champion now unless pascal decides he's retiring at, by the end of the year i think pascal and anthony yard is definitely possible but will pascal want to get in there and risk himself again at 40 something against a hard-hitting puncher like yard I, if anybody's willing to do it it's going to be pascal because pascal might be like hey I'm a tough guy to knock out, and this guy has faded late in fight, so I'm down. And that would throw him right back in the mix. And Pascal is one guy that just seems to be drinking from the fountain of youth. So 
Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I do think it's possible. And then uh, finally, Andre Durrell is my last one. I mean, if Durrell really wants to move up the ladder, he'll fight a guy like Anthony Yard. But that's, again, that's up in the air. Durrell avoided big fights for the longest time um, when he was a legitimate threat. Since he's come back, he's been inactive, and he's an older guy now. I think he's like 38, 39 years old. Will he want to fight like a guy like Anthony Yard? I'll tell you right now, if he fights him and he beats him, he's right there for a world title. So it'd be better to fight him now than later, but I'm leaning towards the less likely. So Anthony Yard, going to be tough for him to get a top 10 guy. But he is an attractive fight, and I do think there's guys that might want to fight him. So we'll see what happens, but I think the most likely option in the top 10 would be uh, Joshua Buatzi, but that's predicated on the fact that um, Buatzi doesn't get the crack at the ball. So kind of a lot of moving pieces going on at light heavyweight 175 right now that might cost Anthony Yard um, a fight that he a fight that he really wants next. But I mean, I could also see Yard just staying busy and taking on somebody, you know, whoever. But I think Yard's at the point where he's tired of doing that. And he really wants to fight somebody legit every time out. So we'll see what happens, but that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on former two-time world title challenger and light heavyweight contender, Anthony Yard from the United Kingdom. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.